are here in Omaha, Nebraska at the Berkshire Hathaway Annual Shareholders Meeting, which is really more like a big convention and reunion. financial love family, fest. Family reunion. <laughs> big family reunion. And with the seated in the seat of the uh, new uh, BYD K9, I believe. It's called the E-Bus. The E-Bus. 12, 12 meter long. About 12 meter long bus sits anywhere from 40 to, to, if you to want to cram a man, 60 people. So. Um, and he's going to talk a little bit about us, uh, about BYD America, okay. and, uh, and what it is, um, and uh, what their hopes and uh, aspirations are. So, first of all, welcome to uh, to EV World, Michael. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, let's start off first of all. Just kind of give us a brief little background of uh, you know who BYD is and what BYD America is. Okay. What your role is. So, so uh, my name's Michael Austin. I'm the vice president of BYD America. Uh, BYD was founded in 1995. Um, what I've seen published is it was founded on about two, 330 to 350,000 US dollars uh, from an investment that uh, Chairman Wong had uh, from his cousin. And uh, started with 20 people and now 15 some odd years later uh, they have 200 and over 200,000 employees. And uh, Chairman Wong is uh, one of the richest men in China, if not the richest. The richest he's been the rich. It fluctuates. Right. It fluctuates. When his stock's yeah. up, he's the richest man right. in China. Right. Wonderful man. Uh, materials research scientist. Uh, fabulous. I met him about 12 years ago while I was working for Motorola okay. and uh, began sourcing batteries from BYD initially and uh, expanded into um, cell phone manufacturing for Motorola and grew, grew into that business and uh, about five years ago joined BYD as the vice president of BYD America. BYD America was established in 1999 in Chicago oh, okay. and um, supported uh, a lot of uh, engineering companies like Motorola and we would put engineers on site to do joint research and development. And this develop, is all development. basically around s small cell phone type batteries, S things like that. Basically around portable electronics. Right, right. Port right. And uh, supported a lot of components too. Uh, about 70% of the razors that Motorola shipped to the market were built by BYD and uh, and badged and, and obviously the, the software was flashed by Motorola. Right. Um, so big electronics manufacturing services partner. Uh, and the the, the, uh, the ambitions of BYD America was to expand into new energy. So leverage this this uh, framework of new energy and component IT component into new businesses. A lot of ODM business where we were doing uh, products for iPad and iPod, um, com you know, mechanical components as well as laptop components, and then expand into um, again non-branded products. We had our uh, solar panels brought to the U.S. We have CE, CEC, and UL approvals uh, on our solar panels, but we were labeling them under private labels. Okay. Um, if you look on the CEC listing, it does list BYD panels, but you won't find a BYD distributor selling solar panels or. So, so panels. when were they? When did you start doing uh, the solar panels? Uh, solar is about two and a half, three years ago. Okay. Um, we got CEC approval last year. Um, LED lighting we launched. Um, we launched predominantly in China selling through Sam's in China, Sam's okay. Club, right. and Walmart. Um, in the U.S., uh, BYD has yet to launch some of these green products, and that's really what BYD's, uh, BYD America's ambition okay. is, right. is to expand our, uh, our retail offerings of green products. The vision has, has grown as BYD has expanded, and, uh, and the vision has uh, also grown when we, we started manufacturing automobiles in 2003 in China. Right. So uh, last year, I think BYD uh, sold 560,000 vehicles, uh, not electric vehicles. These were small engine vehicles, right. fuel efficient vehicles in China. And China is a burgeoning market for uh, for vehicles. And uh, and what Chairman Wong envisioned was to begin to migrate to electrified transportation. And his vision wasn't just to flood the market with, uh, with electric vehicles. He, he recognized that it's kind of a transference of tailpipe emissions to coal emissions, and in China, maybe not the cleanest coal emissions. So it wasn't solving the pollution problems he wanted to solve. So he really wanted to look at more uh, energy generation. So looking at BYD more as an energy company, but a green energy company. So solar, the solar investments were around creating a renewable power generation source, and then using scaled up batteries, these iron phosphate batteries that he invented, 
uh, that were environmentally friendly, scaling them up to grid level storage, and then storing that solar power and making it firm, a firm capacity, so you could begin to potentially replace baseload generation. Right. So now you have renewable power that's relevant to the grid because it's dispatchable. And, and you can dispatch it at peak times, do peak shaving. You can store wind at night with energy storage and shift it to the day, again, shaving peaks. But with a battery storage piece, it began to make that solar power relevant. And then responsibly using that power in electric vehicles or electrified public transportation, like the electric bus we're right. in now, right. as well as uh, e-taxis, electric taxis that are running on the streets in Shenzhen. And then eventually, consumer electric vehicles. But the vision really was, if we're going to electrify transportation, let's go where most of the pollution is generated. And, and what they discovered in China was that one bus travels about 300 kilometers, so 190 miles. But an average car only drives for two hours and maybe goes, you know, it turned out to be a 30 to 1 ratio in emissions. So mm, one okay. diesel bus right. was producing 30 times more emissions than a single private car. So if you electrified a bus, and of course public transportation is very important in China, right. you now offset 30 times the carbon dioxide pollution right. and smog that you would. In. And they did that with taxis. The taxi ratio turned out because the taxi is driving almost 400 kilometers in a given day, right. it offsets essentially 10 times the private cars. So electrifying buses and electrifying taxis in China would offset almost 30% of their total emissions. Right. Did ha, has as part of that initiative then over in China with the mass with with the buses and with the taxis, have you also sort of compensated them by having com, you know, a comparable amount of solar panels that have been installed to sort of offset that, or is that something you're sort of so the, aiming for as a goal? The answer is to be enabled. We know that you know municipalities and communities uh, won't have the funding to move that quickly to renewable generation. But if you build on a platform that is clean energy capable, okay. which electric vehicles are capable of taking an energy source from solar or wind or, or renewable, then as you change your portfolio, if you change your generation portfolio more to green supply or green sources, that, that's immediate benefits. Now, there is direct emission benefits from an electrified vehicle. Electric vehicles, even though you're burn, you're using coal, coal, is still, coal it's yeah. still less impact. The smog right. content, especially in, in densely populated systems, right. it, it is it is an improved impact. Right. But BYD sees the electrified transportation as a way to enable clean energies to more right. capably come into into play. Over time. Which of the, which of the markets? Then obviously you've got a huge growing burgeoning. Um, economy in China where standards of living are coming up, people are moving from using mass transit to bicycles to cars, right. and of course that presents its own set of problems as the 75-mile seven, traffic jam last, last summer in Beijing demonstrates. Well, so, so, so what I'm saying is, is that which of these markets from BYD's perspective is, uh, is the more important? the markets abroad from China or those internal markets or basically you're going to go where the opportunities are? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, there, it really will depend on where opportunities move the fastest. Right. China has a very uh, substantial electric vehicle subsidies yep. as well as um, in order to limit potential, potential infrastructure problems like the traffic jam you talked about, Beijing has taken steps where they have reduced the number of licenses they will give to cars. Right. Yeah, down to about 250,000, something like that. Well, I think it's 20,000 a month, yeah. so it used to be 90,000 yeah. a month, by a lottery system. Right. However, the lottery does not apply to electric to vehicle electric purchases. Right. Right. So now you've given consumers a clean option to, to have a vehicle, um, an electric vehicle, and they've given a subsidy, a pretty substantial subsidy. The F3DM in Shenzhen sells for about $10,800. The E6, I think, will sell just under twenty thousand dollars with the Chinese subsidies. With the subsidies, okay. Yeah, with the subsidies, and uh, that's a fantastic E6 that's that's inside here in the Berkshire Hathaway show. Goes uh, has a sixty kilowatt hour power plant and goes uh, one hundred ninety miles on a single electric charge. In fact, the electric bus has a three hundred and twenty four kilowatt hour battery and also goes over one hundred ninety yeah. miles with electric charge. So you, again, it's designed around the applications, and in China, uh, the average 
can be our average uh, BRT, the bus rapid transits, travel about 150 miles in a given day. So okay. Right? And so it's got a 190 mile range with air conditioning and with loaded passengers. So we have a little bit of uh, engineering slack in that. So let's, so let's talk about the North American market now. You began doing cell phones and, and, and collaborative and engineering with people and, and parts for, you know, um, and then with solar panels in. You've now began to introduce some vehicles. You have the uh, fleet of 10 uh, F3DMs in, uh, LA, in right. LA. So talk a little bit about that program. How'd that come about and how's that working? So it's working fa fantastic. Um, the reason why we wanted to launch uh, our vehicles in the U.S. market is because drivers drive differently in the U.S. market. Uh, we glean a lot through our, our testing.